All right, let's get into this message. I think it's going to be quite a bit um, to deliver. Last week I was a little long, and I hope this week to be a little shorter so that we can all get to the expected place of understanding. Now, we've been reading Matthew chapter 19 for some time now, and you should know it by now. And if you don't know it, whether you're watching online, Matthew 19 verse 11, in the Message Bible I've been reading, it says, but Jesus said, not everyone is mature enough to live a married life. It requires a certain aptitude, which is dealing with intelligence, and grace, marriage isn't for everyone. Some from birth seemingly never give marriage a thought. Others never get asked or accepted. And some decide not to get married for kingdom reasons. But if you're capable of growing into the largeness of marriage, do it. Um, I want to begin this week and ask God to bless this reading and teaching of his word, but I want to begin with something a little comical, which is a little different than my normal introductions, but I want to give you a picture that will help you understand if your relationship is real. And so once you take your eyes, I hopefully to have my picture that will show you that this will help you determine the strength of your relationship, and it's a part of... There you go. I want you to see it. If y'all haven't seen it, those online, they're going to have it. If he hasn't seen your hair like this, y'all ain't in a real relationship, sis. I just, just want to let you know that's how we're going to begin this service this morning. All right. So... <laughs> Here it is, beloved. Scripture is pretty clear. You can take it off. I've had enough. Uh, script, scripture is very clear on what the biblical rationale for divorce is. I taught that last week. I want it to be clear because I know this will be rebroadcast online and people will uh, take a portion of the sermon and say, well, that's not the Bible. Well, scripture in those times were dealing with what was culturally relevant in that time. Now, I'm not saying because culturally it's relevant today, it adds to scripture. I'm just simply saying to ignore what is culturally relevant today, in my opinion, is spiritual malpractice. Because what's happening in our culture today is important and it's imperative that if you're married, I want you to peek in. If you're single, I want you to peek in. I want you probably, you're probably going to give again because it's going to be so good, I believe. But also in the back of the service at the end, I'll be signing these books that I have called Relational IQ, which is recalibrating your relational IQ, which deals with how to learn how to deal with friends. It fits our whole series. It's $10. I'll be in the back. It deals with learning where to place people and not having to live a life where you got to cut everybody off because you categorize them wrong. Sometimes it's not worth cutting people off. Sometimes it's more effective to just reposition them. And so it's a very great book. I hope you'll pick it up if you don't have it. And I hope if you have it, you'll read it because it will be very helpful for you. But I want to deal with this morning that Jesus was pretty clear in Matthew 19 that there are some challenges that the people were asking about relationships because relationships is probably one of the most complex issues you'll ever find or have. But not all of us in this room are gonna get married, so that's okay. Not all of us in this room wanna be married. Not all of us in this room have marital problems. Not all of us in this room have friendship problems, but we all deal with relationships. And so this morning, my job is to give you 10 ingredients that causes marriages or relationships to fail and try to customize it for those that are single and for those that are married. I know in Jesus' day, there was a real question that was being asked, well, what, what are the grounds for me to leave my spouse? And then Jesus goes through and then says, basically, adultery. He says, like, hey, listen, it was Moses did not want that to be so, but that's what happened. 
And because y'all were going to kill each other in order to get out of your covenant, Moses just said, hey, I'm going to permit divorce, but it was never God's intention, right? And so, and so, uh, so he says, well, what, what, so the disciples started asking, well, then what, what are the grounds? Are we stuck? What, what are the grounds? He's like, okay, adultery is one, right? If, if your spouse bucks on you, the covenant is broken if you choose, but it can be redeemed and it can be rebuilt if you desire. And then Paul later writes in the church of Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, the church of Corinth had a lot of issues. I think we're living in the day of Corinth today where it was all about sensuality. It was all about my truth. It was all about philosophical understanding. And the church of Corinth, they had a myriad of issues where they needed two letters to help them address how to do relationships properly. And then Paul says, is, is first, second Corinthians 7, 1, he says, listen, I know y'all been asking, it's better to marry than to burn. But I'd rather say it's better to burn than be burned. So it's no point in rushing into an engagement that's not going to last because you, wanna, you can't control yourself from having relations. So Paul then says, well, then here's another need for you to start considering remarriage is abandonment. If, if your spouse abandons you, you can start a new covenant. But he doesn't give us whether you can remarry or not. That's subjective, and some people will argue can, you cannot. That's not, I don't know, the text doesn't tell me. And then some would add on abuse because Moses permitted a certificate of divorce because they were getting abused. Now, he wasn't talking about verbal abuse because in that culture, they wouldn't, it wasn't about verbal abuse. It was about just killing you. But in today's world that we live in, People find themselves breaking off their relationships not for those reasons, but for reasons culture submits. And I want to give you some of the reasons that culture submits so that if you are going into a relationship, you can have these conversations. If you are in a relationship, you can have these conversations and they could be benchmarks or guide marks to help you and your spouse judge the health of your relationship. And then I want to also give singles 25 questions that you should ask before you get married. Because what I'm finding is that you guys, we all get to the altar and then we realize too late some of the questions we should have asked before we got to the altar. We spent so much money planning the wedding, we did not plan our future. So you plan for four hours, but you didn't plan for a future. Now, the last couple of weeks during this sermon series, I've teed off a whole bunch of people because I've said truth that applies to me as well as you. And no sermon should only be making you feel good. It should make you self-reflect too. From the preacher to the person. Now, if you love what has been said today, email me at pastordavid at tkci.org. If you don't like anything that you heard or something offends you, by all you are, live in America, you have all free rights to express your conviction and thought. You can email nate at tkci.org and feel free to do that. All right, so let me just begin by saying this. There are cultural reasons why we feel the pressure to disengage in relationships. There are cultural norms that, that are not supposed to but supersede scripture in the culture we live in. Hear what I said, it's not supposed to, but it does. Right, because a lot of us are like, no, nah, I followed the Bible. Until it relates to an issue you don't really want to do. Like scripture says, if you have aught with your brother, leave your gift at the altar and go make it right with your brother. Because I don't want to hear your worship if you can't worship. You can't worship a God you don't see and not care for people you do see. And I don't like that verse sometimes because sometimes I'm one of them people, I like to confront people. I'm a confronter. I am not scared of confrontation. I love confrontation. I love going straight to you and saying what the issue is. But sometimes some people are not like that. They prefer not to deal with it. They prefer to walk away from it. But scripture says, no, you got to deal with it. Now, if they choose not to deal with you, that's not on you. That's on them. Amen. Right? Forgiveness does not mean forgetting either. Amen. Forgiveness means that I forgave you and I choose not to bring it up over and over. 
Now, I wanna give you a redefinition or add to your definition of love and add to my definition of love, because love is a word that we loosely throw around. It's like, you just met me, I love you. Well, you love me because I agree with you. You can tell when people love you is when you disagree, you can still walk in agreement. So love is a word that is very loosely thrown around, and I love the way that Paul writes it in 1 Corinthians 13 in the Message Bible. He says this, that love never gives up. Love cares more for others than itself. Love doesn't strut. Love doesn't want what it doesn't have. It doesn't have a swell head. It doesn't force itself on others. It isn't always me first. It doesn't fly off the handle. Doesn't keep score of the sins of others. Doesn't revel when others grovel. Takes pleasure in flowering the truth. Puts up with anything. Trust God always. Always looks for the best. Never looks back, but keeps going to the end. So now let me give you a breakdown of what this means. Love is not impatient. Y'all write that word down. That's me. I have zero patience. Every day I ask God to lengthen my patience. Irritability. Come on, some of y'all real moody. One day we text you, you're happy, and the next day we text you, you sense it. We don't know which one to get. Love is gracious and kind in speech. We all have to work every day on our love walk. Like, man, today I'm so irritable. You know, it's four in the morning, and they're like, good morning! It's four in the morning, bro. Like, bring it down a little bit. Like, um, love doesn't brood over others' situations. You don't hold situations over each other. And you don't hold past injuries. Because you can't get healed if you hold on to yesterday's hurts. Love doesn't hurt each other because you want to make them feel the same level of pain you feel. Those are signs of what? Immaturity. You, you, putting the interests of your spouse ahead of your own is not oppressive. Let me say that again for a woke culture. Putting the interests of your spouse needs ahead of yourself is not oppressive. And we live in a world that says, I ain't submitting to nobody. That's oppressive. You submit to your job. I understand the idea of not submitting to something that's not going somewhere. But the idea of just saying it's oppressive to submit is it's no, it's I'm putting my, your needs ahead of mine. Like I, I want to take a quick poll to end this conversation once and for all. Is it the husband's job to put gas in the wife's car? Now, here's the thing. Here, here's the thing. Make sure it's full, right? Make sure you let us know it's empty. Um, so here's the, here's the thing. Here's, here's, here's the thing. That's an expectation that's not written. But if it's not communicated, can be misconstrued as that you don't value me and my safety. See how culture has given you an expectation that's not biblical, but is given to us that we naturally accept. That was the point of that. So you online before you're getting hot and, and, and all that. I'm like, I can't believe it. Ain't that man supposed to? No. So, so the reality is, is there are cultural things that we put upon people that's not biblical. Now, here's some things that I want to help you. These are the 10 reasons why relationships fail. Number one is we fall out of love. This is a very important thing. You just wake up, I just, I don't love you no more. 
I always like to say sometimes falling in love is dangerous. Sometimes we need to stand in love. Because falling determines the, how we feel at that moment. Love is a commitment. It's a decision. And there are some situations that cause us to fall out of love that are biblical. But the culture says, no, if you fell out of love, you ain't got to be together no more. If you, if you friends, if, see, if you friends, um, um, uh, we, just don't, we just don't vibe no more. Which says that we, we need to be clear on how often do you fall out of love with people. There are days where we don't love each other to the highest degree. But we work on getting to where our gas tank was full to refilling it again. There are some days your gas tank will be on E. That does not mean that it is abnormal. It just means that's human relationship. My daughter came to me and said, Dad, why don't you let us sleep over our friend's house? Did your parents not let us? I said, no, my parents didn't let us sleep over anybody's house. She said, well, didn't you get tired of being around your parents and stuff? I said, I get tired of you all the time. But that don't mean I don't want you around to protect you and to preserve. And so these conversations happen because we need to give people the reasons to our why not just stamp our authority because our kids will grow up falling out of love with us because they don't understand our rationale and relationships are not just spousal relationships they're also about our kids too they need to understand our reasons for our no's number two you need to have these conversations are you falling out of love with me because i need to know Are you starting to fall in love with Will Smith? Beyonce, whatever the case is. Do we need a red table? <laughs> All right, let's keep moving. That felt like it was a really sour moment that went there. All right, number two, real fast. Values have changed over time. Now, that's a, that's a very unique one because who you were 10 years ago is not who you are today. So even in friendships, I need to find out, do you still appreciate the things that you used to appreciate? Because some people freeze you where they met you. And you've grown and they've stopped growing. You've educated yourself and broadened your exposure and they have not broadened their exposure. So they limit you to based on where you are. Values have changed. Not, we're not all the same. No African-American is the same. No Latino, Latina is the same. No Asian person is the same. All of us are different. And so if you group us all together, no white person is the same. If you group us all together, then we have a problem. Values change over time. <laughs> Number three is lack of relations and emotional connection. This, this, I don't want to spend too much because we have little kids that are here, but I do want to say that this has to be a conversation that you have. Are you getting enough? If you're not, it needs to be a conversation that needs to be had because most people who leave their relationships, oftentimes, I won't say most, I'll say some who leave their relationships leave because this is not given enough. That doesn't make it right. But in the church, we want more money and we want more of these three-letter words, but we don't want to talk about it. it. We need to be clear. Oh, babe, my head hurt. That's fine. Your head don't need it. Your head's not needed in this matter. Let's, let's get out. I just, sorry. I just keep going. All right, lack of. <laughs> so here, here it is. We, we need to be clear because if we're not clear, They'll be on Instagram watching challenges because they're not being met. Now, you do know the church of current, they struggle with this more than anybody because Paul had to address them and say, listen, y'all can't just leave service and go join the harlot. That's in your Bible. In modern day, it's the same thing. That they're leaving you and it's not just men. 
Because I know when I said that, you're like, yeah, that's what men all day be about. You do know that industry has gone up during the pandemic and it's been women leading it. So the thing that we need to be conscientious of, is it enough? And ensure that there's a connection there and it's not just a duty that we got to check off. Because while you're holding out, Bunquita is at the job. Omar Epps is at the job. Idris Elba is at the job. Will Smith is at the job. They're waiting. So how, how's home? Oh, it's, it's good. I, I don't like to talk about it. Okay, you like, oh, awesome. Your outfit look nice. Then it goes from your outfit look nice to what you doing later. Then it goes to sliding each other's messages and stuff. Why? Because it's not given enough. And that communication is not being had. Because when we get saved, we spiritualize things. And God's going to take care of it. You know, God's given you the ability to take care of each other. Next is financial. Uh, March, we're talking about that the whole time. March, most of our relationships struggle because we're trying to be where we are not. You don't need everything you want. And once you start comparing what someone else does for their spouse to where you are, that's when we all miss it. I always tell this story, and it's true. I remember with my brother-in-law, he got, got married. I can say it. I don't care. Um, he had got married. He proposed to his wife. I brought my wife a small ring because I knew we needed to keep upgrading higher. Well, he decides, because he want to be a big show-off, he decides he's going to buy his wife this big old diamond ring. And, you know, he was like, hey, man, look at the ring I bought my wife. The first thing I thought was, great, but it's bigger than my wife's. And in my heart, I'm like, man, I got to get her a bigger ring. I can't, I can't go out like this because you know what they're going to do. They're going to text each other. And they're going to go out and somebody's going to just flip their hand and one light's going to shine better than the other, right? And so internally, it just raised this idea. Like, I need to keep up with what they're doing, right? It happens to us all. It starts off with houses. Oh, you bought a house? I got to buy a bigger house. You got red bottles? I got to get red bottles. And then we start getting in this rat race where we find ourselves having more debt than credit. I'd rather sit with my 32 inch and be able to see the TV than have a 70 inch that I'm still making payments on. So maybe we need to get together and create a budget that we stick to so that you don't keep spending money that I'm not aware of and I don't keep spending money that you're not aware of, that Amazon don't keep showing up at our house every day. So that we can make sure that we're on track to have a future because it's hard to have good love when money is in the way. Amen. Scripture says money answers all things. Money makes a difference. So sometimes we need to bring our lifestyles down so we can bring our lifestyles up. Yes. Next is communication. We all communicate differently. And you have to not imprison people to communicate like you. Amen. Even in friendships, we all communicate differently. Some people, they communicate overly, and some don't communicate as well. Some people have big details, some people don't give details at all. You have to give grace to people to learn how to communicate at their level. You cannot hold people accountable for what you don't tell them. That goes for any relationship. Don't tell me you're upset about something I don't know about and it's been three months. You need to tell people what you're upset about. This is a big one, family problems. Scripture is so clear. When you are in relationship with anybody that you decided to marry, their family is secondary and your family is primary. And here's the big thing, I tell friends this, you come to me and say, PD, I got marital issues, whatever. I'm gonna listen to you, but I'm not gonna talk about your spouse negatively because here's what happens. And you can learn this too, because the next problem is friend problems. 
because you got your BFF that you go to and you tell the problems that you got going on in your life and you say, listen, um, my, my wife ain't doing it. I mean, she wrong, dog. You, uh, why are these chicks, they be tripping, bro. You need to leave her. And then when you get back together, you cut in with your spouse. Can you believe my homie said, we are, you need to leave me, I need to leave you. Yeah, he told me that. I didn't like the way he said it to me, but I just, you know, and now when y'all get back together as relationship partners, your friend is isolated from your relationship because you repeated what they said because they only had your side of the story. Your version. So all of you who have BFFs, you're married and your husband has a BFF that's a woman or you're a woman and your husband and your wife has a BFF that's a, that's a male, you gotta be careful on the input that you give because you're only hearing one side of the information. Whether they're same sex or woman and woman that's best friend, man and man, you gotta be careful on the information that you give because you're only giving your perspective. You gotta be careful running the mama and running the daddy when things go wrong because now mama's house becomes an escape as opposed to a family house. We need to be clear on that. Mama shouldn't be trying to tell me how to run my life and your mama, right? Because we're married. And be careful bleeding your stuff out on social media. Because when you move on and you delete the status, we still remember. And you cray cray. If you would go online and post about where you are currently relationally. And dear singles, for the love of God, please stop doing these thirsty appearances online. I'm just loving myself, big old house, got all this woman to give love to. Like these advertisements, we know you single, we saw your status. You've got to you got to be careful on how you present yourself because how you present yourself is how you'll be how you advertise yourself is how you'll be approached. Let me go through this real quickly cuz we got a whole lot of stuff to get through today. Family problems are major. Mama don't like her but my mama's word your mama's word is not over your relationship. If you wanted your mama's word to be so valuable, you should have married your mama. That's why scripture wrote these prescriptions so that we don't enter into situations that harm us down the road. If your mama didn't want it to be happening, so you should, never, you should have took your mama's advice and never got married. Took your daddy's advice and never got married. Because your mama and daddy should not be in your bedroom. This is the next one, that's the big one. I'm so concerned about this because it is, and Nate, you can just break it down and then you can pick it up by playing Shirley as I know my name, I love you. But this is a big one and it is, it is one that consumes our culture and then it makes us have all of these other issues. It's the time problem. Which means that you spend so much time at work that you don't have enough time to be home. Now, there are jobs that require seasons where if you're in the tax business, this is grind season. And let me just give you a quick little pastoral plug. Y'all doing these fraud things? You're going to have a prison ministry. Right? I know it's big in our community. I'm, I'm for tax business. I want to see all tax businesses win. But at the expense of doing it unethically and then having the feds come at your door and knock on your door and you be in prison for an extra $800 per file, it's just not worth it, right? Okay, so let's talk about time problems. If you want to marry an entrepreneur, this is going to be a conversation that you're going to have to give into. It takes time. Everyone, we live in a culture that's team no sleep. Well, team no sleep means there are no, that you will not have the time that you would like to spend with the people you truly care about. And you can say, well, pastor, yeah, if you schedule a business, because you ain't ran a real business, you ran a hobby. <laughs> Anybody who runs a real organization knows that it takes a lot of time to get it to where it needs to be. You, there, there's no relationship that grows without time. So if that is the case, then you need to schedule your time, because if you don't tell your time where to go, you'll wonder where it went. Yeah. Time is important. 
So you need to make sure that you have allocated proper amounts of time so that your relationship can thrive. That is why it's important that you have a Sabbath. Scripture was always clear. It said, you know what, you need a Sabbath. You need one day where you don't work, one day where you're not incarcerated by looking at your cell phone, and you can put it down so that your relationships that are in front of you can go forward. Whether it is walking around the neighborhood, whether it's walking around the park, whether it is whatever, the, whatever is watching shows, I don't know. Um, I just think that in Scripture it's clear, too, that where your heart is, that's where your time will be and your money will be. Right? And here's the real truth, and it, it goes for me, so I'm not, don't take this and run home and be like, you see what pastor said at church? You're, if you're not careful, your entrepreneurial dream can become your mistress. Or, is that, if you're a woman, is that your mistress too? Is that the same word? Okay, good. So that's just both, both ways, because we have female entrepreneurs and male entrepreneurs. So, if you're not careful, your spouse then feels like they're competing with something they will never be able to beat. So there is, a, there is a challenge to all of us who live in this world where it's, you gotta go get it. Team no sleep. Well, you're basically saying that it's about getting your dreams and monopolizing your dreams and maximizing your dreams. But the question is, at the expense of what? Now I always say this, don't go up the mountain and leave the people at the bottom of the mountain that started with you to get you on the mountain. Amen. And then we, because we don't have time, now we get into divorce, and then we have custody issues, and we have child support, and we have alimony, and we have all of these things that, be, that make a marriage very sour, that could have been prevented if we had talked about these things. Infidelity, we talked about that. That's one of the biggest, biggest things that come, that is the, that is the, um, the fruit of not dealing with these subtle things that are happening. Um, the, the next one, the last one, is, is, I'll give you a bonus one, is expectations not met. Um, for example, I started my introduction with, is it a man's responsibility to put gas in a car? And all of the liberated women who said, there are no jobs that are according to sexes, said, yes, that's a man's job. But here is the argument. I'm not an attorney, so Monique, do not try to cross-examine me after service. But I'm just, I, I just, philosophically, if that's a man's job, then we're defining roles on what is responsible for what party to do what. So when we say it's a woman's job to cook, yeah, yeah, that's a man's job, a man or woman can do it. So then now it comes to gas, it's, there's, there's, there's just, there's just rules that aren't, no. So what I'm just simply saying is an argument is an argument all the way through. So if we're defining roles that are assigned to works, we need to be clear on our expectation. I want you to be the initiator. Well, you need to let me know that. Because if I'm waiting on you and you're waiting on me, now I'm upset because I thought you were tired you're not upset because you thought, hey, I thought he was good because expectations were not communicated. Expectations are a big thing. What do you expect from me? Do you expect me to pray with you every night? You need to let me know that. I don't believe, I believe couples should pray. I don't believe you need to pray together. I think you both should pray. And I know I got the religious response can you imagine me and my wife praying together every single day? So I'm praying with her, and I'm like, Lord, there's some things about her. <laughs> or she's praying about me. Lord, that David, he gets on my nerves. I'm like, now me and God fighting with her. Like, Lord, she's selling out on me, right? So the, the reality is this. We all need to have a relationship with God. We all should come together and join our relationship to God. There's no religious formula that says, I have to pray with you every single day. 
you have your prayer time, I have my prayer time, we can come together and pray on things together jointly. But that doesn't minimize, a lot of us do religious things that are not scriptural because we want to say that we're spiritual. So y'all pray together, but y'all don't tell God the truth. God, let her, let him brush his teeth more. His breath be stinking. Lord, let her take the barnet off in Jesus' name. So y'all, y'all not telling each other the truth. So this is the reality. We all need to have a prayer life. Now, let me give you 25 things a single should ask before. I'm not going to go through all of them. Um, but what you could do is um, you could, uh, we'll have them up online um, for you. Uh, let me run through these really, really quickly because they're important. I'm not going to go through each and every single one of them. Number one should be, what are your expectations of your, you're not going to be able to capture all of it, but it'll be online today. I'll have them posted online. What are your expectations of our relationships and what are your expectations of our roles in this relationships? What are your spiritual beliefs? How do you cultivate your spiritual relationship? Do you not believe you should go to church? Because some of y'all talk about, oh, I got a man, and then you stop going to church. So a man asked me, because I can ask, he said, Pastor D, I got a question where should me and my girlfriend buy a house together? This is my opinion. Absolutely not. Why would you say that? That's why I don't go to them churches. It's your opinion. You can do whatever you want. But when you buy a house together, you're not married. He finds someone else that's more attractive. She finds someone else that's more attractive. Now y'all got a house together that you're going to need to divide and sell, but you wouldn't have to have that if you had made the right investment up front. Build the foundation first. No one builds a house and runs into the master bedroom. Build the foyer first. Number three, do you believe in celibacy or do you need to test drive vehicles before you buy them? Boy, it's starting to get real quiet in the church. <laughs> yeah. What was your last major relationship like, and how long did it last, and why and when did it end? Do you desire to be married, and why do you think you are still single? Don't tell me because God's keeping you in this season. Do you desire marriage and why are you still singing? Do you keep in touch with your exes? Is she going to be a bridesmaid? Is the groomsman someone that you've been with? If you ask for a car facts, why don't you ask for a human facts? Jesus, have mercy. <laughs> do you want children? How do you feel about disciplining children? Do you have children? What is your relationship with your baby mama, baby daddy, or baby mamas, or baby daddies? When married, what is your vision for family? Where would you like to see your family in 10 years? How satisfied are you in your current career? Because I need to know if I love my family and I love my community, if you get a job in another city, are you going to move me? That may be a deal breaker for some. This is a very important one. What is your relationship like with your mother and father? What is your relationship like with your family? Because if that's fractured, there are other areas that would be fractured too. What are your most prized possessions? Would you trust them in my care? Have you been involved in an abusive relationship? Because I need to know. Because if I go like this, I don't need you running over the chairs and stuff because you, you were abused and I didn't know. Here's a very real one, and I wish they taught this in church when I was coming up, because this is a real thing. Do you want a prenup? 
It's not, no, no, no. If they, yeah, I got to get a prenup. You got trust. They don't trust you. Listen, some out here. Out here, this some from some of y'all. This is a business transaction. This is this is your come up. All right, Gene, let me borrow you, and then we're done. All right, Nate, you can play. Uh, they'll be online, so you can. And this is a very another important one. What is your debt to income ratio? Do you have a debt freedom plan? Do you have savings and investment accounts? What is your mindset on money? So I'm going to use my wife because I can't use anybody else for this example. So Jean, yeah, come here, Karen. She didn't know she was going to get called up here, but it's about being flexible. So marriage is this way. This is why, so you stand on Jean's side. So if you're married by a piece of paper that's keeping you together, that's not going to keep you from walking. Right? Because if, if you make me mad, that piece of paper is irrelevant. It was valuable the day we got married, but now that I'm upset, it's not valuable. You need a big God to keep you together. So you grab my wrist and you grab my wife's wrist gently. Because the truth of the matter is there'll be days you want to walk away. Don't you be nodding your head over there. Right, now. <laughs> right? There'll be days you want to walk away. But you need a big God to hold you. When you feel like walking, you need a God. That's why it says don't be unequally yoked. Because if you aren't married to someone that's married to a God, when they want to walk, there'll be nothing to hold them back. It is, that doesn't mean just because they're in God that will stop your divorce, but it simply means that you have a greater chance of sticking together. If you got a God that will hold you when you say, I'm done with it. I'm, no, I done said no. I'm not going to do it. And even though you walk away, God won't let you get too far. Thank you. So this is why it's critically important to, to do your job well and to communicate if you're online singles, the questions will be there. You need to ask these questions because it's too late to say, I made a mistake. Some of you are too old to make a mistake. You're too old to invest your heart in the wrong place. I hope it helps you. I hope to unto thy own self thou be true. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for what's been said. I thank you that it is a very challenging word, but I pray it helps not just the people, but the preacher. Pray it grounds us into a better, harmonious relationship. Help us to have these tough conversations. Help us even as singles to prepare ourselves for these conversations. Because there's nothing worse than to spend all this time building something and then have a judge tell you it's over. And then live with the pain of separation. So help us to do it right. And God, it's not a message of condemnation for anybody who's been divorced or anybody who's messed up or made bad decisions because we all are products of your grace. And we all need it. So help us to be better. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.